Hi, hello, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Alicia, and here I love to share all things creating and selling digital products on Etsy. Now today you're in for a real treat as I'm going to be sharing with you an exclusive video from within the membership that I run, the Creators Growth Club. And this membership is all about helping you create and sell digital products on Etsy or in your own online store. So this how to video is a response to one of the questions of a member within the community. And she asks how to use margins and print bleeds within her printables so that she can create the best possible product for her customers. She wanted to know about what kind of sizing she should use and whether or not she should use them at all. So to help her out and other members within the community, I created this video, but I know how important this information is. So I thought that I would also share it here on YouTube so that you can get the benefit of this information too. So before we get into the tutorial, the how-to video, I just wanted to share with you a little behind the scenes of the membership, just in case you're interested in joining as well. So here you can see on the screen, we've got multiple different areas of the membership. We've got up the top here, the roadmap, which is following my journey as I revamp my own Etsy shop. All the new items that we include in the membership go here. We've got PLR templates. So those are, are resellable templates. They're the perfect option for people who don't know where to start and just want to get that boost, that jump start to starting their digital product business with um, PLR templates, Canva templates, Notion templates, things like that. We've got a whole range of them, 28 plus of them, I think. We've also got um, a uh, commercial use clip arts. I've got plenty of workshops, courses and action plans, other tools and templates for your business. Um, I've got guest expert trainings as well. So all the things that aren't my zone of genius, we've got them here in the, um, in the guest expert training section more how-to tutorials um, and tech tutorials. So this is where this actual training lives within the membership um, and so much more. We also have a private Facebook community where you can connect and um, chat with other community members and also get um, personal feedback from myself. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive on into this how-to tutorial where you can learn all about print bleeds and um, page margins for your printables. Okay, so one of our lovely members has a question as it relates to using margins for printable products. So if you have a, um, a digital product, a, a printable product, so in this case, a, um, a, a daily routine sheet, and the intent is to sell this to your customer so that they can print it either from home or with a third-party printer, do you need to use margins and um, do you have to consider margins? Now, depending on who your customer is, but in most cases, if somebody's uh, purchasing a printable sheet like this one, for example, that you can see on the screen, generally they're going to be printing from home. Now, when printing from home, most people would just have a regular um, DIY kind of printer, right? They're not going to have those commercial style printers, which can often allow you to print um, to the very edge of the page. So in this case, and if that is your ideal customer, then you might want to actually consider how this will look when they print on their own printer. So there's a couple of things that you'll want to consider. You'll want to consider the print bleed, so how far the printer will actually reach on the actual page itself. And you also want to consider whether or not your customer will be binding this product. Are they going to be turning it into a multi-page document where they'll actually bind the product itself? So really, you have to know your customer and what they'll want and what the end use of the product is in order to determine how um, much you are going to add in margins um, and how you are actually going to design the actual product itself. So in Canva, you can actually create a um, like a guideline for your print bleed and you can also create guidelines for your margins. So let me go ahead and share with you where you can access these um, settings in Canva. So here um, I've got a A4 document. I've also got a... Um, 
the same um, design in a US document so that I can show you how this would look on both. So let's start with the US letter size. Now what you would do is you would go to file, you would go to settings and then here is where you're going to be able to um, create margins and also um, the print bleed. Now you can go ahead and just go to show margins but you can't actually edit the size of the margins when you go to show margins. So what I like to do is I like to add guides. Let's go ahead and add our margins in first and then I'll talk to you about the print bleed in a second. So I what I like to do is for a US letter document, I like to add in um, about half an inch of a margin around the entire document. So to do this, just go to add guides. And what's going to happen, it's going to automatically give you all of these um, lines here. So to customize that, let's go to um, custom and we want... Uh, just go to zero columns and zero rows and in the gap we want that to be it doesn't really matter because once you pick zero and zero here it's going to um, allow you it won't allow you to change the gap anyway but what we want to do is we want to change the margin so I'm going to put in 0 0.5 here and then 0 0.5 here and then go to add guides. And then now you're going to see that Canva will give us these nice guidelines um, across the entire document. And then if you go ahead and add in any more pages, those guidelines will appear for the entire document, okay? Um, so that's how you add in guides. So yeah, for a US letter, I would add in 0 0.5 inches. For a U, um, uh, an A4 document, let's go to A4 and I would go, um, so the equivalent of 0 0.5 inches or half an inch is around about 13 millimeters, give or take a bit. So I would do file, go to settings, again, go to add guides, I'm going to go to custom and then by default, because this is um, an A4 size document, the, the actual size is going to change. So we're going from inches for the US letter to now millimeters. So again, let's do the same. So let's go zero on that. And in the margin here, let's put in 13 millimeters and 13 millimeters. Whoops. 13 and go add guides. And now we've got that margin here on this A4 document. Okay, so that's how you add in margins. Now, if you um, are going to assume that your customer is going to um, print this and then bind it, what you might want to do is you might want to um, add in an additional um, margin here to the left hand side and then perhaps even to the right hand side just to give you a little bit more space. So perhaps you could take that to um, 0 0.75 inches, so three quarter inch. So what you would do is you would go to file, go to settings, go to um, add guides again. Now you probably don't have to worry too much about the rows. I would keep the rows as is, but for the columns, I would change that to 0 0.75. Let's go that and go and see how now our left and right margin has been brought in ever so slightly, but the top and the bottom is the same. That's probably what I would do because that will give you enough room to now bind here. So for example, I'm just going to go find binder rings. Okay, this is just for as an example. Okay, so we've got um, graphics here. So let's say there was going to be like binding rings here. Let's duplicate that. This is just to give you an example of what this would look like when printed. And let's scroll out. So now you can see you've got plenty of room here to ensure that your design isn't going to get, you know, cut off or it will be, it won't be in the way of that binding here to the left hand side. And then obviously that then would appear on the second page. So if I go to duplicate, but now this would be on the other side. So these binding rings would actually be on this side then, right? Okay, so giving yourself that um, three quarter inch on both sides of a US letter document will ensure that um, 
you've got plenty of room for the actual printable itself. Okay, so that's how I would do that. Now let's talk about uh, print bleeds. So here we've got file, let's go to settings, and now let's go to show print bleed. And then what Canva will do is we'll, it will create this very, very small and very narrow area of your page. And it's going to let you know that this is where the cutoff will be for your printing. So anything that is um, added to your design or added to your page that goes beyond this line will not be printed on a um, regular uh, DIY home printer. Okay. In some cases, some third party printers allow the option to um, get your design to go all the way to the edges. But for most people that print from home, this is not the case. So what, how does that affect your design? Well, it can affect your design if firstly you have a solid color behind the design itself. So if your page isn't white and it's got like a you know, a color behind, you're going to have to assume that there will be a white border around the entirety of this page. Okay. So you want to take that into consideration. You also want to take into consideration if you've got any elements, design elements, clip art that go beyond this line. So for example, if I went to flower here, and let's say I wanted to add in some decorative elements to the outside corners. So here, and let's say here, I'm going to spin that around. Very good. So let's say we wanted to add in these floral elements to this page with a home printer, like before. Where this line is, um, actually, let me just take this margin off so we can see this a bit more clearly clear guides. So where this margin is in the corner of this page, this design will be cut off. So you essentially you're going to have like a white strip down here and a white strip down here. Okay. So that may affect the look and uh, feel of your overall design. Okay. But if this was getting printed with um, a professional printer or a high quality printer, um, you could potentially get the design to go all the way to the edges. But yeah, so it all depends on, you know, the end use of the product for your or with your customer. How are they going to be using this design? Okay. And how are they going to be using this end product? Um, if you didn't want that, you know, cutoff effect, what you would do is you would get rid of the background and then you would think about how you could design this so that this floral element is within that print a printable margin. Okay. So perhaps what you would need to do is you would need to add it maybe this side here. Okay. And then maybe bring this in a bit. Okay. So that's what you would have to do. You would have to think about how you're designing it as it relates to how um, your customer is going to use it. Okay. All right. So you get that print um, bleed can come through on the A4 size as well. So let's go to file, go to settings. Let's go clear guides on that. File, settings and show print bleed. And again, you're going to see that print bleed come up here. Okay. All right. So I hope that this was helpful and it's answered some of those questions as it relates to um, uh, margins and print bleeds. So again, those numbers. So um, half an inch for US letter around 13 millimeters for A4 and that's three quarter inch for, um, you know, uh, uh, printables that are going to be planner and bound and that's around about 19 millimeters um, for an A4 document. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you have any questions or comments regarding this video or any other videos that I share here, please feel free to reach out in the comment section below. And if you like this video and want more exclusive content, you want PLR templates, more workshops, the private community and direct access to me, then please feel free to check out the Creators Growth Club. This honestly is the membership that I wish I had when I first started my digital product business. It really does have everything that you need to see success selling digital products on Etsy. Now I will leave a link to the membership in the description box below. So please feel free to go check it out. And I would love to 
welcome you inside the membership. Okay, you have a wonderful day and I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now.